Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Panini Absolute Baseball. 10 box, random team break number three. There it is right here, 2021 Absolute Baseball. Very big thanks to everybody here for getting in on the action. Michael, Mikey going big, getting the last 10 spots straight up, which I appreciate to make this happen on a, late on a Sunday night. Thanks everybody else for getting in as well. I appreciate it from start to, fi start to finish. We need the whole group to make this happen. All teams are in. Let's do it. Let's roll it. Randomize names and teams five and a three, eight times. Your names first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. After eight, got Terry down to Mikey. Five and a three, eight times. Nice Jamar Chase. Five and a three, eight times for the teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. Five and a three, there's eight times. There's eight right there as well. Padres down to the Metropolitans. All right, trades are allowed, so we will pause the video and, and, and see what kind of trades there is going to be. But Terry with the Padres and the Phillies, Eric with the Blue Jays, Michael with the Cardinals, Twins, and Reds, Terry with the Yankees, Brandon with the Indians, Michael with the Rockies, Arthur with the Rays, Josh, you got my Dodgers, Brett with the White Sox, Brandon with the Giants, Terry with the Tigers, TJ with the Cubbies, Sean Breen with the Rangers, Arthur with the Brew Crew, Mikey with the Nats and the A's, Allen with the Astros, uh, Michael with the Braves and the Red Sox, Brandon with the M's, Charles with the Royals, Michael with the Pirates, Cal with the Marlins, Nancy, you got the Angels, Cal with the O's, TJ with the Snakes, Michael with the Metropolitans. All right, let's sort by column B right here. And we're going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades, and then we'll have the break. Stick around, BRB. All right, welcome back, folks. A little bit of trade chatter, but in the end, no deals were done here on uh, September the 12th, 2021. A great Sunday of sports. We're, we're, in a, uh, we're in a great part of the sports calendar, ladies and gentlemen. We got week one of the NFL just started. You know, the Premier League is in full swing. We got NASCAR playoffs. The baseball's getting down to the to the last bit of the season, and we'll be getting into baseball playoffs. So, I'm getting into a great part of the season. cards on the bottom are just either inserts or base cards. Set that over there. Show all these cards right here. <laughs> we did, Derek. You sounded doubtful. We got a lot of help from Mikey. Um, to 199, there's Reese Hoskins. Luis Patino to 149. And Roy Campanella to 199. Yeah, it's, it's tough for international customers to get into the action. I don't blame you, Lupin. All right, behind Belly is Evan Longoria, Triple Relic, 22 out of 49. For my rivals, the Giants, who look like they're going to wrap things up. Wrap the division up with, with a win or so. I don't know if I'm going to have enough top loaders for this break. Yeah, 
Yeah, I got a little, little more eye candy, little trading card eye candy before we call it a night. I think this will probably bring us pretty close to the end of the night. All right, and nice. This is a nice feature of Absolute Baseball. There's Kettle Marte. Right on the sweet spot. Baseball signatures going to TJ and the Diamondbacks. 8 out of 75. Pretty solid player here, TJ. Oh, that's another power insert. And then behind Ballinger is Jed Gierko. 85 out of 99. Two color patch. What's up, Sean? Uh, you got... You got the Texas Rangers. No Rangers yet. We're just the first box in. This is for the Brewers. That's going to be for Arthur King. And back here, 16 out of 50, Dylan Carlson. St. Louis Cardinals. That's going to be for Michael. Sixteen out of fifty, and I think all card ship in this, right? Pretty sure they do. Yeah, all card ship in this. And we'll have our shipping team sleeve and top load all of those, uh, all of those numbered cards, just in the, in the interest of time. So with the, with the Giants looking like, this is, this is still kind of surprising to me, but with the San Francisco Giants uh, looking like they're going to lock up the, I think their magic number is like one more win or something like that, and they're taking the NL West, which is crazy to think about. So the talk around LA, and, and the Dodgers have pretty much, they do have the first wild card spot locked in. So the question around town is, and if you're, if you're a big baseball fan, you might be able to answer this question for, or weigh in. The question around town is, who do you start in a one-game playoff? Walker Bueller or Max Scherzer? There's Jim Tomei to 149. Now, I think the easy answer is, is Max Scherzer, but there's a case for Walker Bueller. He's, he's pitched some big, big, uh, big games for the Dodgers before big must-win games before, but then Scherzer is Scherzer, right? But is that disrespectful? To, you know, baseball, sometimes pitchers get sensitive, right? Is it disrespectful to Walker Buehler? I suppose that's why Dave Roberts gets paid, right? To smooth over situations like that? There's Rymel Tapia. I think it's Scherzer. I mean, you look at the start that he made today. I mean, he was perfect through what? Through seven or something like that? against a pretty good Padres team that can hit the ball really well. There's Ramel Tapia for the Rockies, Michael with that one. And we got Alec Baum, quad relic and auto. That is 40 out of 49. And you know what, TJ? That's precisely what has got people. I mean, we'll have to see what Walker Buehler's next start looks like. What if he just goes off? You know, but yes, after the after Bueller's last game against the Dodgers, I think that's what's kind of sparked that conversation here in L.A. Or against the uh, Walker Bueller's last start for the Dodgers against the Giants. He wasn't as sharp as he usually is. There's Ahmed Rosario. Mets colors, but remember he's in Cleveland now. Cleveland, this is for you. Brandon Hall with the Tribe. And behind Jordan is Newman. Absolute Inc. Kevin Newman. It's for the Buckos. That'll be for for Michael as well. And that's out of forty nine. Let's see, who are the Dodgers gonna end up playing? What's I 
guess it's still, it could be, well, it's going to be the Reds or the Padres. And it looks like the Cardinals are only a game behind a wild card spot. Philadelphia is two and a half back. Mets are three and a half back. That might be a little bit tougher. Or three back. Might be a little tougher for them. They have to leapfrog a couple teams. It could be interesting. Redemption on the bottom of that one. All right. Chris Bryant to 149. JT Real Muto to 149. Hyunjin Roo to 10. Nice low number there. And Isaiah Kiner Falefa to 149 for the Rangers. Right, so you don't think anyone gets past the White Sox? Yeah, the White Sox are are kind of scary because they've just been cruising. No one's really been paying attention to them. They only have 82 wins, but that was with a, they battled a lot of injuries. They kind of coasted into the playoffs, which because they're 12 games ahead of the Tribe, which could be a bad thing. I don't know if maybe they don't have their competitive juices fired up. That might be the only sort of sort of negative. For 70 out of 99, Garrett Hampson for the Rockies, Michael. And behind Tony Lazeri is Jake Cronenworth. 9 out of 10, Crone Zone. You're in the Crone Zone is what they say in San Diego. That's a nice gold ink auto for the Friars. That's going to go to Terry Cahill. Oh, that's a scratch on the top loader right here. Sorry. I thought it was on the card for a second. Right. Jay Cronenworth deserves a cleaner top load, I think. Top loader. It's Tony Lazeri for the Yankees and behind Trey Turner is Ryan Braun, dual relic for the Brew Crew. That's gonna be for Arthur King. But going back to the White Sox really quick, they do have the combination, um, Arthur King, they do have the combination of hitting and they got the combination of pitching and a good bullpen, et cetera, et cetera. So that is, that is a dangerous team. All right, the redemption is David Peterson, rookie baseball material signature, who I think is a Met. Yeah, it's a Metropolitan. It's going to be for Michael and the Mets. Next box. Are there going to be any late season surprises here in the division anyway? Or are they all kind of wrapped up? Tampa Bay is nine games ahead of Toronto. That's pretty much wrapped And Boston, they're both nine games back. That's pretty much wrapped up. White Sox are 12 games ahead of the Tribe. That's pretty much wrapped up. Astros are six and a half ahead of the Mariners and the A's. That's wrapped up. All right, Braves are four and a half a ahead of Philadelphia. That's pretty much wrapped up. Brewers are 14 games ahead of the Reds. That's wrapped up. And I, I guess the Giants are going to wrap it up pretty soon. Because there's two and a half games ahead of... So, the, so it's just wild cards then, really, is what we're looking at. So I guess... Toronto and and the Red Sox 
both have wild card spots, but they pretty much have the same record. So they're looking at the Yankees a game back and the Rock or Rockies, A's and and, uh, and Mariners a few games back in the AL wild card race. So that could be kind of interesting. All right, we got Justin Verlander to 99 for the Astros. We got Juan Soto to 149 for the Nats. Braylon Marquez to 99 for the Cubs. And Tim Anderson, speaking of the White Sox, to 149. All right, behind Bellinger is Cedric Mullins. That's for the O's. That's going to be for Cal and the Orioles. Nice collection of relics there. Behind Cody Bellinger is Alex Kirloff for the Twins. I do like that autograph on the piece of the lumber. That's Michael Estrella with the Twins. It's 32 out of 50. Chris Bryant, behind Bellinger again is Adrian Morejon, 18 out of 99. It's another Padre for Terry. And back here is Dean Kramer for the O's. Cal with the Orioles. Seventeen out of twenty-five. Nice gold ink autograph on that black baseball looks pretty sharp. All right, next box. I think one of the strangers is the Reds in a wild card possibility. They they hold a wild card spot right now. Why is that strange? I mean, they've got an above 500 record. Probably end up winning like 80 plus games by the time all said and done. <laughs> yeah, it has been a minute or two since we've seen the Reds in in the playoffs, right? They must have had a wild card recently, but maybe lost, like a, a one-gamer. There's Ken Griffey Jr. to 99. There's Miguel Cabrera to 149. There's Wander Franco, 86 out of 99. No, that's not true. Really? Was 1990 the last time the Reds were in the playoffs? That can't be right. There's Wander Franco, Tampa Bay Rays, Arthur King with that. And there's Garrett Crochet for the White Sox. Nice Golden Gato. <coughs> Excuse me. That's going to be for Brett Myers. Who has the White Sox? 10 out of 25 on that one. Reds weren't in the playoffs recently? Got a little chilly for a second. No, 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 no. The, the, yeah, the, the, come on, Rex. 2020, they were in the NL. They lost to the Braves in the NL wild card. 2013, they lost to the NL wild card to the Pirates. 2012, they were in the division series. They lost to the Giants. 2010 NL division series Phillies. They lost there. 
NL Championship Series in 95, they lost. They got swept by the Braves. They beat my Dodgers in 1995 to get to that NL Championship Series. Yeah, because I was going to say, I know I've seen the Reds in the playoffs since 1990. 63 out of 99. Maybe you're thinking they haven't, they haven't won since the mid-90s a series, since, that, since, the, since they beat my Dodgers in 1995 in the NLDS. They've been a, n- a number of times, but they haven't won a playoff game in a while. Maybe that's what you're thinking of? Oh, you're not considering a wild card as a playoff? I mean, people do usually do. It's postseason. I'm looking at this under Reds.com postseason. The Reds consider it postseason. Uh, there's Evan White. Uh, that Rysel Glesias goes to Nancy, by the way. She has the Angels. And the Evan White goes to the M's. That'll be for Brandon. Nine out of 50. All right, well, still, the Reds were in the playoffs in 2012, then, where they lost the NLDS to the uh, Giants. If you're going by... If you're going by uh, Rex rules. What did you Google? Rex, you, we got to work on your researching skills here. You Googled last time Reds were in the playoffs. Why does that baseball reference thing come up first? They, they're usually pretty accurate about that. Yeah, don't look at that, Rex. That's, that's so weird how they wrote that. Because the next sentence after that is the Reds were absent from the playoffs from 1995 to 2010. But they don't account from 2010 to 2021. <laughs> kind of missed a decade there. Rex, edit that page. Oh, I don't know if you can edit that page. That's a baseball reference page. They need to edit that. You need to click into the article, Rex. And then you'll see. Then you can go to the team page. No, you're still wrong. <laughs> you said 1990 was the last time the Reds were in the playoffs. That is wrong. But you, if you read a little bit further, you realize they had omitted 10 years of, of information. Why, are they, why aren't they updating that page? Why is that first on Google results? Is there a way to... Rex, send, send some feedback. I think you can click a feedback button there. Tell them that's wrong. There's Max Scherzer. Do it for the people. Do it for the internet. He's out of 99. Matt Olson for the A's. 80 out of 99. Tell them that's the wrong page, wrong landing page. 55 out of 99, Cal Ripken. In fact, if you scroll down a little bit from, from champs or chumps.us, whatever that is, on their team page, it has a Reds playoff history from 1903 to 2020. And they'll tell you that they, they'll tell you the information there. Come on, Google. Making Rex look bad. 77 out of 99 for the Rangers, Brock Burke. Seventy-seven and ninety-nine, Rangers. That'll be for Sean Breen. Behind Babe Ruth is Casey Myers. Nice. He's had a nice rookie campaign. You know what they, uh, you know what they tell us in, uh, in journalism school, Rex. You know what they told me is you got you need two at least two sources. Casey Mize goes to the Tigers. Terry with the Casey Mize, former number one overall pick. Um, oh, and there's Spencer Torkelson. Could be a nice one-two punch for the Tigers. 43 out of 99. 
always have to look for another source to to reconfirm the force, first source, especially on the internet. You can't can't just go with the first thing you see. You can't trust Google. You got to cross reference it with another source from a completely different website. And there's Jonathan Stiver, White Sox. Rookie auto for Brett Myers and the Shy Sox. All right, one, two, three, four boxes to go. We're almost there. Thanks, everybody. How are we doing on time here? I think this should get us pretty close to the end. Yeah, I think this is going to be our last one. Are there any other orders coming in? No, no other orders coming in. What's that from, Rex? Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Is that from Dodgeball? It's Fernando Tatis Jr. to 149. Miguel Cabrera to 99. And Willie Adamas to 99. Got Wander Franco, three color, triple relic for Tampa Bay. That'll be for Arthur King and the Rays. It was from Dodgeball. Nice. I got one. Rafael Marchand, Philadelphia Phillies, rookie baseball autograph. Yeah, I distinctly hear Ben Stiller saying it, right? Yeah, it was Ben Stiller says it. I didn't know if that was Dodgeball or another wacky Ben Stiller movie. Terry with the uh, Phillies. Um, that's Mike Yashemsky. Dylan Carlson. Behind him is Yoshi Tomo Sutsugo. Three color, dual, uh, three color triple relic. Evan White, another Evan White for the M's. That's going to be for Brandon. Yeah, I remember being Dodgeball, a pretty solid movie. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, Sean Jaspi is saying. This is true. Speaking of old movies, uh, I watched... Uh, Sean, do you remember the movie Backdraft? Well, I just it, That's on HBO Max. It's a... Studios. They used there used to be a backdraft uh, set I, like a oh, rider. Are you telling me it's not there anymore? I don't think they do that anymore. I think it's been gone for a while. Oh, that shit was so cool. No, I think it's been gone for a while. Just like how they don't have like the Miami Vice experience at the at Universal Studios anymore. Come on, Sean. This is 2021. Um. Yeah. You guys remember the movie uh, Backdraft, Boys and Girls? Firefighter movie. With Robert De Niro's in it, Donald Sutherland's in it, uh, Kurt Russell is in it, who plays who plays the father in the movie, and he plays like the oldest son in that movie. Plays both roles. I guess it's symbolic. De Niro's in it. William Baldwin is in it. 
think Jennifer Jason Lee is in it as the William Baldwin love interest. And I think the Kurt Russell love interest is, I think, Rebecca De Mornay. So, yeah. And the uh, all the fire scenes and stuff like that, there's Ken Boyer to 25 for the Cardinals. That's going to be for Michael. They were all practical effects as well. So, so all that fire stuff that was, they were just they were all in it. No CG or anything like that. So done in the old old way, the old ways, using old magic. The show Otani to 199. But it's on HBO Max. I rewatched it. It was really good. I don't think it's it's terribly. It's terribly complex in terms of plot. Yeah, Sam loved it too. It's it's not going to blow your mind plot wise. It's pretty straightforward. It's Brandon Nemo right there. But yeah, I think I th it, it was it was pretty good. It was pretty solid, just for the special effects alone. Uh, Michael with the Mets, by the way, the Brandon Nemo, and then behind Luis Garcia is Jesus Sanchez for the fish. Cal with the Marlins. Ah, I'm not a firefighter. I don't know that life. But I seem to seem to remember thinking that it's... I mean, it's, it's a Hollywood movie, so I don't know how accurate it is, but it's pretty entertaining to watch. C.C. Sabathia, Quad Relic. But I think the the practical effects in that movie were so good that that it definitely holds up. There's CC Sabathia. Is that number? No, not number. But that'll go to the Yankees. Terry for the Bronx Bombers. Just in case he doesn't respond. Behind George Springer. Oh, he just responded. I'm gonna replace that with that. Okay. Can't find it. There's Anderson Tejada, Texas Rangers. Did they put all the Predator movies on Prime? I thought there was just one. 42 out of 50. Anderson Tejada. That goes to Sean Breen and the Rangers. There's only one Predator movie. <laughs> oh, there you go, Sam. So, okay. So, Sam's like, I remember when it came out in theaters, me and your buddies were all firefighters, so we all went to see Backdraft. So how, like in terms of the actual fighting of the fires and whatnot, at the time, would you say it was pretty, pretty accurate? No, I think Rex, I think there's only one Predator movie. Just like how there's only three Indiana Jones movies. <laughs> Just like how there's only six, possibly seven, Star Wars films. And there's only one Predator. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure there's only one Predator. There's Garrett Cole to 199. Some of it was to Sam. All right, so. so there you go. So it's not a complete complete fiction, fictionalization of firefighter life. All right. The hits. 47 out of 99. Cole Tucker, dual relic. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah, it sounds like there's nothing like being inside a house. That, yeah, that's on fire. I can't. I cannot even begin to imagine. This is for the Pirates. That's going to go to Michael. 
And 23 out of 60, Andres Jimenez. Cleveland, this is for you. Brandon with the Tribe. Guardians next year, Cleveland Guardians. All right, behind Mount Castle is Steven Matz, 10 out of 49, and the Mets. No, sorry, for Toronto. You used to be on the Mets. Sorry. Uh, Blue Jays, Eric, with the Bluebirds. And we got Tools of the Trade, Quad Relic and Autograph. Leody Tavares, 29 out of 50. You don't like the Guardians name, Mark? I kind of wish they went Spiders. I think that was an old uh, Cleveland name. This is for uh, Sean Breen and the Rangers. And the final box. The Guardian, at first I was kind of like, Guardians seems a little bland, but I think, I think there's a, I think it does have cultural significance for the city. I think they have, they have like these big statues that are there in Cleveland that everyone knows about that are like Guardians. So I think it makes sense. Maybe you don't want maybe maybe spiders wasn't very good because I mean do you have a spider mascot? And does that spider mascot? I mean would that terrify children? Probably. I don't know. Would a big giant guardian? But I guess you can kind of cartoonize like a big statue and make it look kid friendly. All right, there's Adley Rushman to 149. Koufax to 99. Cronenworth to 99. And LeMahieu to 199. All right, your final hits. We got Jalen Davis, 51 out of 99. Giants, Brandon H. with... San Francisco. We got Kohei Arihara. Another Rangers rookie autographs. That'll be for Sean Breen. Yeah, I wonder what the. I feel like I feel like the Cleveland Indians kind of kind of got that done pretty quickly, and the watching the football team. I haven't really figured it out yet. People want to know. There's Alex Reyes, dual relic for the Cardinals. That's going to be for Michael. Not numbered right here, but that'll go to, once again, Michael and the Cardinals. And the last one is going to be Jared Oliva. Two out of thirty. Blue ink autograph with the uh, the light blue right here. Cyan blue, cerulean blue maybe. I don't know how fancy they get with their colors, but there it is. Rookie autograph right on the sweet spot, going to the Pirates. That's also for Michael. Michael, thank you very much for closing out this break. Thanks everybody for getting in on the action as well. That was a ten box break of 2021 Panini Absolute Baseball. It was random team break number three. Uh, let's do a quick little little recap from the last box going backwards to the first box. Pretty solid. Absolutes at a pretty pretty friendly price point compared to a lot of stuff and I think you can have a lot of fun with this with this break. I really like those baseball autographs. There was a nice Casey Mize. Some nice relics here. That's pretty cool too. Got some Kirlovs, got some names in there. This is David Peterson for the Mets. Cronenworth gold autograph. Hyunjin Root at 10. Kevin Newman auto. 
Alec Baum. Dylan Carlson's pretty solid. Kettle Marte as well. And we started off with Longo for the Giants. There you go, boys and girls. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with me. Thanks for hanging out with Jaspies. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com.